Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be doing the part two of the mini Blender series where we're going to take this crate that we modeled last time, we're going to texture it, um, save it to a file, get it into a material in Unity, set that all up so we get our objects in our scene with our full material. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, should be another shortish video. Well, last video was about 20 minutes showing all the modeling process and teaching hotkeys, but there's not as much work to do in this video. It's a bit simpler, but I'm going to show you two methods to do the unwrapping. Um, of the model into the texture. We'll get into that uh, after I have thanked my Patreons. Thanks to Michael, Paul Robinson, Fulbom and Wesley for their donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else it would like to help out, then the link is in the description below. Apart from that, let's get into it. So what do we have? We have our cube. It's, uh, well, the crate. It's a single object. Um, and it has a material unnamed, you know, just like, it looks like a default Unity material because as far as I'm aware, well, it is. It uses the standard shader and opaque. Um, just default, right? Obviously I could apply this to it, but this is not what we want, right? If we try and apply a material to it, it just like, it becomes that flat material. Now, we do want to apply material to it, but notice how on the standard shader, on albedo, you can also select patterns. Um, obviously our floor currently uses that material, so I could like put these different um, things. I mean, most of these aren't actually set up to be used as a, um, for a sprite, uh, for a material like this. But the point is we can set a um, texture there. So we want to make a texture to put there and then we'll leave this as white, uh, obviously not for the ground. And the reason we leave it as white is because um, in like colors terms, um, white is one, 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 I guess, um, full RGB values. And then, so RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha, alpha is transparency. So if you have alpha on full or one or two, five, five, depending on what system you're using, um, the, the max will either be will either be between 0 and 1 or 0 and 255. So if it's at 1, it means you can see it, and if it's at 0, it's completely invisible. 0 0.5 is 50% opacity and so on. Um, and then RGB is red, green, blue. Just, you know, you mix your red, green, blue. Just like if I go into this material, colors, we got RGBA. So um, the reason why this doesn't go transparent when I drag it down is because it's using an opaque shader. If I use transparent and dragged it down, you'd see that it actually does go transparent. Uh, we've also got some other sliders that we need to change to make it completely invisible, but the point is um, we're going to make a material for this where the albedo texture is the thing we export from Blender, which will be mapped properly for the material, for, for the object, and then we'll apply the color white, which um, making it white will actually give it the true color of the texture file. If we change this color, it adds like a tint, um, so let's get into that. If we go to Blender, open up your file, I've already got it open actually, let's not open that again. So. What we can do is basically, uh, we, what we want to do is we want to take this object and make it so that all the faces, so if you press tab to go into edit mode, as you remember from last video, um, and you're on face select, which is this one here, um, you can select each face. And we want faces to have particular colors. Now, the thing is, we want um, all of the outside faces to be a certain color, um, maybe the inside to be a different color. Basically, it's up to you. If we go to my um, project, um, we're going to be going for this kind of look when it loads in a second. So we're going to be going for this kind of look. Um, so what do we want? We want this kind of um, light brown on the outside and dark brown on the inside. I'm going to be going for that. So the way we do this is we first of all have to apply the materials that we want in Unity. And then we can, uh, sorry, not in Unity, one minute, we apply the materials in Blender and then we convert them to a texture file, which we then export to Unity. So let's just first of all call the mesh crate just to make things easier. If you have a mesh collider in Unity, um, so for example on here, notice how the mesh filter is called cube 006, which is just a bit confusing. So just call it crate or whatever. Um, now, what we need to do is we need to go over to materials. So we've got a materials thing here, but it's empty. So let's create a new one and we'll call this material um, like inside box. And then I can make one called outside box. So now we need to say, the color of this, so I don't know, maybe it's, um, if we go for the inside, we made that one, the inside's darker, so we'll go for a dark brown, so you just tweak your colors until you get a dark brown, basically, I'll say that'll do, so we got dark brown. Now, notice how that's applied it to every face, which isn't too big of a deal, um, but we only want this on these inside faces. So what we'll do actually is we'll make a, another material. So add new outside box. And we'll, I guess we could just call, uh, copy 
no wait, I've got an idea. Uh, go to diffuse, take the color picker and steal this color. Um, now we'll actually want to select everything with A. So make sure in edit mode with you know tab, tab, edit, whatever. Select everything with A. And once we've got all the faces selected, we want to apply this outside box color. Now we want to make this lighter than the other one. So let's just go and make it a lighter brown. Whatever color you want. We, we can obviously tweak the colors afterwards. Now notice how that's applied to everything, okay? What we actually want to do is we want to assign this inside box now just to the inside faces. So if you look back here, um, I've got it not on this bit and not on this bit, only on the inside faces behind the planks. So, and that's on all the sides. So if we now go to here and shift right click, uh, sorry, I didn't hold shift. Okay, so we shift click, so you select these faces and get the top one and the bottom one. Now once you've got all these inside faces selected, select the inside box material and press assign. And then we can then go back into edit mode by pressing tab. And then now we've actually assigned these materials to the different faces. Now, if I actually save this now, save and go back into Unity and give it a second, it'll actually work. Now obviously, yeah, the colors could do some tweaking. The point is, this isn't actually what we want, because first of all, we've got two materials, which obviously gives you some freedom in, you know, which parts you select with what material. But for a, a static object like this that just has a single texture, we, we only really want a single texture for this. Um, we don't need any other textures that, uh, like materials that do other things. We just want one material that works for it all. So we're actually not just going to use um, colors like this. Now, quickly, just for the sake of... Yeah, let's let's make this uh, inside box um, not that color. Well, no, we'll make it brighter and then um, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, I'm not here to show you how to make a nice looking thing, just how to make it work. I mean, there you go. I guess the reason why mine also looks a lot better in there is because of the post processing, and I haven't got the same colors anyway. But post processing would help. So what we need to do now is we need to drag across this here, the top right. If you drag this across, you get another view window, the same window, just a second one. And if you do something in here, you do something here, it's different. Obviously, certain things that you do will happen in both, but basically it's just another view. Um, now, all we want to do is keep our normal view in here. So we're gonna leave that and go over here to this window. And at the bottom left, you select what type of window. And by default, it's just the 3D view that we've normally got, but there's all these other ones you can use. Now we're gonna be using um, UV image editor, so looks a bit odd you know you just get this flat thing but this is where our textures are going to be now we don't currently have we, we doesn't know basically what our object is as such it just knows we have an object and we've not done anything with it so what you can actually do is you could um you can select faces for example and then you can you know put them onto here so you can put like uv uh unwrap i actually can't remember the key binding but basically now it says these faces are mapped to here on a texture file and we can move these around and basically put them where we want to you know save space on the texture file now for a complex model you will want to manually do most of your work because first of all the positioning of these um, let me just undo so the positioning of where you put your like faces on this sheet basically the positioning of these is easy. It makes your life easier or harder when you're actually texturing, and also you could, uh, if you've you know got a good workflow of this, you can save quite a lot of space. Like because this is going to get saved onto a texture file, so if you use up more space than you need, you're going to lose quality. Um, you might want to, for example, limit yourself to certain um, different like texture file sizes. So we're going to go like 1024. I don't know. It, it depends on what resolution you want. Now I'm for this for this tutorial just going to simply. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to go over here and, um, nah, sorry. I'm just going to select everything with A. So everything selected with A on here. Um, ignore the stuff on the right. And I'm going to press Smart UV Project. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, manually, so, well, not manually, so it's going to automatically do it for us and fit everything on here that we need. So do it and just press yes. And you'll notice that everything on our cube has now, sorry, everything on our crate has got its own part on this texture file. Which, as you can see, a lot of this could actually be saved because, for example, 
these parts of the box, this part, this part, this part, they're all the same. You could just overlap these and save a lot of space because they're going to be the same color and stuff. There's a lot of this that you could save space on. Now, I'm not really going to spend this video doing that, but the point is you can do that. Um, so that's one thing we'll do in another video. Maybe I'll show you how to like uh, save space by compacting your texture. But for this, we'll just we'll just deal with this because it's a basic tutorial. So we've got everything selected. And now what we can do is we can actually click. Um, well, what we're going to do is we've got no light in the scene. So we're going to go to um, which thing is on here. It's the world settings. Uh, here it is. So this one with the world we will just turn on environment light and not change anything. And that just means that when we render this, it still has just like ambient lighting um, to when you render a text file, a texture file. So now that we've got this over here, um, we want to basically um, turn it into a texture file that we're then going to put our own image on. So if we go down here and press uh, new and we're going to call it like crate. Uh, 124, whatever color, yeah, alpha. Um, we'll go for color grid. It doesn't matter. But the point is, we've now got this. And if we go back to our other window over here, we're currently looking in material mode. But if we go and look in texture mode, you'll notice we've actually got our texture on here. So it's basically showing how certain parts of this correlate to this, which is what we've unwrapped. Now, as you can see, it doesn't look very nice. And that, that doesn't matter. We're still going to get like a good like texture for it but the point is we could have saved so much space with that but it's still I'm not going to like wait make this video drag on too long to show about efficiency this is just simple you know how to do something really quick so we've got all these faces correlating over here but now we want to actually make this look like what we've got so we can select everything so go, go into uh, objects mode by pressing tab so you can just select the box all right leave it where it is we'll go across the camera which is for render and if we scroll down you can scroll down to bake now we're going to basically bake our object with our normal materials we had on it onto this texture file. So if we just simply go onto full render and press bake. Now, as you see, it's it's what it's done is it's put our texture file. Uh, so it's taken a view of this, the camera's view and put it onto a texture file. That is now what our object looks like. Now, to be honest, if you go on full render, it does all of this stuff and we really don't need everything on here. Um, we can just select one and just do that one. Um, it depends if you want everything, okay? So, you know what, we'll, we'll go with full render. Um, I've missed, oh, it's right at the bottom. All right, yeah, full render, whatever. All right, let's say you're happy with that, right? You've got your texture file done. If we go back to uh, solid, no, which one is it? It's fine, that, this, this is our texture. So now we've got create. Um, and it's saved. Yep, yep, yep. So now we need to save it. So image, save as image. Um, just save it in our project, okay? Just save it wherever you want. So this is a texture file now. If we go back into here, we've got this create texture file. Um, it's fine how it is. And what we want to do is we now want to go back to here and we just want to delete our material. So we just have one left. Um, so we can just delete this material. Um, oh, wait a second. Um, just delete the material. I'm struggling. Uh, it's not going away. There we go. I was pressing the wrong button. Then we should call this one box. Okay. Now it doesn't matter what it looks like. Just just call it box. Okay. Um, and we can now save our project and go back into Unity. And if we select this, you'll notice that on the crate materials. It's got no material for the crate. So we're going to press extract and just extract it to here. And what that'll do is it'll basically make a material for us just how we want it. And this is our texture file here. And that's already on our object now. And we could go up here and we could put our crate texture onto the ground. Now, obviously, with put, without post-processing, it doesn't look great. But the point is this object now has one material using... Oh, wait, no, that's why. Sorry, it's because I had the uh, color on from earlier. So just make sure your albedo, like actual color is on white. And there you go, this crate looks uh, just like how we had it in Blender. And we have one material for it. So obviously you would um, make a folder called like crate. Put all your crate stuff in there. Keep in mind, that's just a uh, backup file. So you can delete that if you want, but I uh, don't know why that didn't go in. Um, why is it called box underscore crate? I don't know. Is that what I, I might have called my blender thing that? 
yeah, okay. But anyway, you get the point. So um, it's that simple, really. You just do the render. Now, obviously, these like black bits on here is just because there's no light there, but that's fine because inside hit, inside Unity, you'll notice the bits on the inside don't get light anyway, so that's why they're black. Now, obviously, you won't be able to go inside your object, but let's just say we now chuck on a, uh, a rigid body. You've got your... Uh, maybe a collider on here. Um, yeah, a box collider. And just chuck this up here, rotate it a bit. And then just press play. And there you have it. You've got your own custom model in the scene. You can do whatever with it. It you know, exists, it's textured, it's using one material. It's using a texture that you can then obviously reuse or whatever you want. Um, it's up to you just to do the, um, you know, in here doing the rendering. Well, once once we've done this, if I, I mean, it, it won't really look good for this material as I've mentioned in the last video, but you can smooth out things on the model, but we'll do that on, an, in, on a model that isn't all pointy and stuff. So yeah, I hope you like this video. I hope you understand like the basics now of how to take a model and just quickly get it in and working. If you do care about file sizes and, you know, saving quality and, um, stuff on your images then obviously smart unwrap isn't really the best it's best to do it manually if you know what you're doing um this scene would look better with post-processing and like anti-aliasing stuff there's like lots of bits that could look higher quality but the point is it works and i hope you like this video uh if you haven't already liked subscribe it would mean a lot join our discord server link is in the description below but apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye